For this review, I was provided a code by the publisher 1C Entertainment, so a big thanks to them for doing that. Felseal's Missions and Monsters DLC was released today, adding in significant gameplay elements such as missions, new maps, and new classes. If you don't know what Felseal Arbiter's Mark is, I will link my review in the description and the outro so you can check it out. To summarize, I loved how it incorporated gameplay that was very reminiscent of Final Fantasy Tactics. I clocked in over 100 hours on the base game and completed all the content. However, even with games I love, I typically don't go back solely for gameplay changes alone. But since I was provided a review code, I thought I'd check out the new updates. Out of all the new features included in the update, mission assignments were what I was looking forward to the most, since it reminds me of errands from Final Fantasy Tactics. Missions work by sending out units to complete a timed objective off-screen. Each mission's chance of success depends on the number of units sent out, their class and abilities, and a base value depending on the mission. Rewards such as currency and components will be given if the mission is successful. Missions are accessed through the guild and have a short description of the issue, detailing the objective while also hinting at what recommended units to bring. These descriptions also offer some flavor to the world building, but I didn't find it too interesting since it didn't relate to anything I cared about. I eventually just stopped reading them all together and just looked at the highlighted words to get clues on the best units to send. Missions were very low effort activities with good returns, so there is a lot of motivation to do as many as possible. They worked really well with the gameplay loop that's already in place, giving purpose to units that would otherwise be unused as I progress through the story content or grind levels. As a result, it also alleviates one of the issues I had with Felseal, where only a handful of units are ever used or needed. Previously, there was little reason to recruit new characters or spend the time to level them. The injury system did make it useful to have a couple of backups on hand, but with the introduction of missions, there is now more reason to have a larger cast. Sending more units on missions means a higher chance of success, but also means that you can't use them in battle, causing a demand to have more. Because of the way missions worked, it felt more rewarding to do them as someone who started from the beginning and could take advantage of the benefits. It wasn't as great when I loaded my post-game save to do them, as there wasn't much else to keep me busy as the timer was running down. I found myself playing Felseal like I play time-gated mobile games, checking back every so often when the timer would run out so I could run my next batch of missions. I repeated this until all the missions were complete, most of the time. Some missions unlocked additional encounters called hunts and large-scale battles, which gave me something to do while missions were going. Hunts are a one-time event where a tough boss encounter is fought, but in general it didn't feel that much harder than the rest of the game. Although, this is likely due to setting my difficulty modifiers to make the game as challenging as possible, outside of permanent injuries, so everything was already pretty difficult. There were a few specific hunts that were actually more challenging than the others though, and required me to respect my characters to deal with their shenanigans. The nice thing about hunts is that they give additional special rewards like monster customization options at the guild, and sometimes even new allies. Some hunts also had a few new lines of dialogue, which I got excited about, since this was the closest thing to new story content that I would get. Large-scale battles, on the other hand, aren't much different than normal encounters, other than the fact they let you deploy 9 units instead of the standard 6, giving even more reason to fluff up that army if missions didn't do it for you. The best part about large-scale battles is that they occur on new maps with interesting designs, my two favorites are Port Grendel, which offers a beautiful small port to fight in where I can push enemies into water or snipe them from the top of a building, and Dumadi Depths, which is a dark sewer with high platforms where enemies can be pushed off to their doom. As neat as it is to be able to use more units, the downside is they take longer to complete and give the same amount of AP in comparison to patrols, though there are more components obtained. The DLC also includes guild upgrades, which I gladly took advantage of. It's a new progression mechanic that provides extremely useful bonuses to missions and patrols. They work by constructing a mini town of sorts on a 3x3 or 4x3 map made up of squares. Different structures can be built on each square, providing different bonuses. With the limited amount of space and vast amount of structures, I had to choose which buildings I wanted to construct, but not only that, I had to account for the bonus gained from them being placed next to other specific buildings. 
The cool thing is that Felseal's world map is divided into five regions, each with their own guild layout, so it's possible to set up different parts of the world with different bonuses. I only cared about missions, so I just focused on that for all the regions. But if I ever decided I wanted to change what I have, the layout can be adjusted, making the system more interactive. There is a downside of having to scrub the whole layout though, since buildings can't be replaced piecemeal. This also means messing up placement will require a complete reset, which was annoying. These new additions were the most meaningful to me, but the DLC also adds the Samurai, Wrangler, and Beast Master classes that increases the variety of an already largely diverse group of classes. The Samurai is a fun DPS class I like to use with my glass cannon builds. They deal high amounts of damage, and their passive skill to turn melee skills into ranged attacks was really enjoyable to use. Beastmaster is the most interesting class out of the three that plays the role of a hybrid DPS and support. They can summon tiny creatures with their abilities, and they stick around their master, providing additional bonuses such as attacking nearby enemies or healing nearby allies. It's a really unique class that I enjoyed using. The Wrangler is another important class that relates to monsters, they provide support for them, and even work with zombies created with the Lich or Anatomy skills. The Wrangler's tame ability is the only way to recruit monsters, outside of hunts. Now it's possible to play Felseal like Pokemon and capture all the monsters in the world. This added another fun activity to do in the DLC, even though I don't care much about using monsters in combat. I didn't like Bizarro who was the closest unit to a playable monster in the base game, and the DLC didn't change my mind about them. But being able to expand my roster with a variety of monsters, almost like filling out a Pokedex, satisfied the completionist in me to get everything in the game. The DLC also buffed monsters, except for Bizarro who stayed the same. New monster classes were added along with a rework of the monster class system. Originally, they only had their base class, but the DLC has added the ability for them to have an additional two variant classes, giving them access to three class skill sets and three sets of passives. It sounds like a lot, but given that monsters didn't have many skills and weren't very customizable, this makes them more viable and comparable to the human classes. This also affects enemies as well, so now they're even more deadly than before. Felseal Monsters and Missions offers a wide variety of gameplay improvements that make an already amazing game even better. Unfortunately, the people who will get the most out of this are people who haven't completed the game yet, or want to start the game from the beginning. It adds more intricacies to the gameplay that weren't there originally. Even the battles are different now, and more difficult than it was in vanilla, with the new monster variants and classes that enemies now have access to. This is a great DLC, and I liked what it did, but if I wasn't given a review copy, I'd probably pass on it. Not having any new story content is a big drawback, since I don't really like to replay the same game, even if there are new changes. If there was a new story DLC, it would be a completely different story. Still, there are definitely worse things I have spent $13 on, but considering the extra hours I got from my enjoyment of the DLC, it definitely would have been worth the price. And at the very least, it gives more reason to love Felseal and all its greatness.